good afternoon. <laughs> so I am going to stand over here only because I have to change the PowerPoint. But my name is Amy Conti. I'm with Chelsea Place Senior Care. And I am here to talk to you today about private duty home care. So on this first screen, you have a home care overview. You see homemaker and companion service, nurse registry, and home health agency. So we actually fall under homemaker and companion service. Welcome. Hi again. Oh, it's okay. We like to, I like, I'm sorry, but I don't like anything to be stuffy. I like things to be interesting, okay? So you have your regular homemaker and companion. So a homemaker companion license could be either, people have a choice, a 1099, which means they are an independent contractor. What that means, some companies out there, um, they subcontract employees, which is fine, but they have to, they don't pay them directly. They work it out where those per people have to file their own taxes. They're like a contractor, any kind of business contractor. And um, there's also ones where they're their employees. Like, and I'm not trying to sell Chelsea Place, but for instance, we, well, kind of, I guess I should, but. <laughs> now, this is general home care. It's not about Chelsea Place. I'm joking. So like, but for instance, Chelsea Place and quite a few other agencies in town, we, all the, our workers work for us. So they are W-2s. They are our employees, which means when you have somebody come into your home, the minute they step in that door, they are actually a liability in a good way, but where, say you have an area rug and somebody comes in and they tripped over it, God forbid, and they sprain their ankle, we'll kill, keep it light. W-2 companies, like the companies where it's their direct employee, they actually cover workman's comp, liability, all kinds of medical insurances. So it's not your responsibility. So somebody trips and hurts themselves, the employer is going to take care of that. And that did happen to somebody I know. But with an independent contractor, it's not the same idea. Not that there's not anything wrong with that. They're good people and all, but that is the difference because there's pluses. They might be a little less expensive. Homemaker Companion will do light house cleaning, laundry, linens, transportation. They'll shop for you or with you. They'll do meal preparation. Anything that is non-contact. So if somebody needs help with a shower, they can put soap on the washcloth or stand outside the shower, you know, just because you don't feel comfortable, say you're a little shaky, but they cannot touch you, okay? So that kind of license is more of a homemaker companion. It's no touch. They can help somebody on and off a toilet, but they cannot wipe them, okay? Which there's another license that does, which I'll get to. So, um, they can be a companion. Say you want to go out and you need respite care, some time to yourself, or need shopping done, and you can't leave your loved one alone at home. They can come in there and strictly just sit with them. You know, um, do crossword puzzles, watch TV. So there's a lot they can do, and it's just that extra peace of mind in the house. Then you have um, the nurse registry. The nurse registry. They are also a 1099 independent contractor. So they do all the things I discussed, but they can do hands-on, which means if somebody has a ta hard time and they need help toileting, they need help with a shower, they need somebody to wash them, wash their hair, or even give a sponge bath in bed, they are allowed to do that because they can touch. And they also can do medication reminders. Now, the home health agency, it's actually non-skilled home health. It's everything that a nurse registry does, but it's the company's employee, like we talked about in the beginning. So they are W-2s. They're a direct employee of the company. So that company is going to carry 
workman's comp, liability, all the kind of insurances you have. Um, they have more backup available as well. So they'll do any of the homemaker and companion services. They can do the personal hands-on care. They can do medication reminders. Um, and then underneath, it says Medicare Home Health. That's another license that's skilled nursing. So they can do everything like I discussed, hands-on, but they can also do some physical therapy, occupational therapy, nurse registry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong thing. I want to talk without looking because I know all these answers, but no. <laughs> um, so it's just more skilled. They can have nurses come, check a, a wound if you have it. So that is a home care overview. If you look... Go here, sorry. Okay. So homemaker and companion services, basically, they're all similar, but the homemaker and companion cannot do hands-on. When they say hands-on, it's touching somebody. Again, keep it a little more simplified. They cannot wipe somebody if they need help on the toilet, and they cannot touch them by bathing them. Okay. They can all do basically everything else in the household and the transportation. Okay. Um, personal care can provide hands on assistance with the activities of daily living. Okay. So basically, you have a maker companion and you have your personal care. Some people call it non skilled home health. So one can do the hands on, the other cannot. And then the difference, again, we're going to go back a little bit. So if somebody works directly for a company and they're not subcontracted, that company is going to take care of all the insurances because they're their employee. Subcontracted, they're an independent contractor. So they have to get paid directly usually and carry their own insurances. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that. Sometimes some people might find it's less of an expense, but later on down the road, unfortunately, it um, might be more of one. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay. Bear with me on this. Okay. Does insurance pay for care? All right. So, hmm, let's see here. Medicare does not pay for private duty home care. I will note, we're hoping one day it does. They are talking about it. But so what, how it works is if you have private duty home care, if you have a long-term care insurance policy, which is a private policy you pay for on your own monthly, that is called long-term care insurance. There's also veterans aid and attendance, which is your VA. And um, they have a table here today. They can talk to you about that. They're amazing. Um, and then there's a statewide Medicaid managed care. So there's basically Medicaid that can also pay for private duty. But there's only certain agencies that accept it. So if you're calling an agency, ask them, do you accept Medicaid? Not Medicare, Medicaid. Um, there's alternate payer sources. Some people do reverse mortgages. There might be a workman's compensation or um, VHA standard medical benefit package. So sometimes there might be another plan you have. Maybe you worked for a company and later on down the road, they have some benefits. That's why it's always good to know and keep those papers. <laughs> it can sound complex, but it really isn't. Because even after this, I can get answer any questions. And again, even after today, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Cost of care. Homemaker and companion services, the national average is $23.50. Locally, it's $22 to $24 an hour. Do not totally quote us on that because there are companies who charge a little less or a little bit more, but that's basically the average. And then a regular home care agency, remember that's our personal care, they average $24.72 an hour, and locally they're $25 to $28 an hour. 
And sometimes they all have specials, so it doesn't hurt to ask. Who provides care? So, state requirements. These are the minimum requirements. Those employees need a level two background check. They have to be CPR and first aid certified and additional state required training, which includes Alzheimer's, food prep, medication, et cetera. And the CPR and first aid certificate has to, um, they make sure that they keep those records with their employer who they're working for. And the level two background check, it's actually a pretty intense screening. I know even with our employees, if we have an employee who's left us and they get pulled over for a moving violation, we will get a notification in the office on our computer saying this so we've got a speeding ticket, even if they're not working for us anymore. So you can feel very comfortable knowing that. Home health aides. So a home health aide is a certified aid. They must pass core competency and skills test administrated by the home care agency. They must provide personal care and assist with the activities of daily living. We call them ADLs, including personal care, feeding, grooming, bathing, and toileting. Okay, so just to sum that up, a home health aide, the company they work for, certifies them. So for instance, if somebody comes to work for us at Chelsea Place Home Care, even if they worked for uh, Comfort Keepers, great company, and they, got, they have their home health aid through them, we still have to certify them under our license, which we do for all our employees. However, there's also certified nursing assistants, CNAs, and they have to be state licensed. It's a licensed healthcare professional that must pass a state license exam and receive continuing ed education to keep their license. Because a CNA will have to know more than possibly your a homemaker companion. You know, they might need a little bit more medically to know, and that's why they have to be state certified. They have to um, also, let's see here where I left off. I'm sorry. So provide personal care and assist with activities of daily living. Again, ADLs, including personal care, feeding, grooming, bathing, toilet, et cetera. So, you know, believe it or not, when you give somebody like oversee a shower, it's not like, you know, you're putting just, you, even a child you have to be careful with in a bathtub, but especially somebody who's might be older, you know, they might be more fragile. You know, I, I'm not gonna admit it, but I'm getting a little more fragile myself, but you know, we might need a little bit lighter of a touch and these people are trained how to properly transfer people. You're not just saying, get in the shower, we're gonna clean you up right now. <laughs> we have to be instructed and taught properly. And also CNAs can be employed by nursing homes, assisted livings, hospitals, hospit, hospice, I'm sorry, private home care agencies and more. So a certified nursing assistant is different than a home health aide. They have more education and are certified, um, but they both are competent to do many duties. Medicare versus private home care. Medicare home health agency. Medicare home health is gonna do physical, occupational, speech therapy, wound care. Who pays it? Medicare and Medicare Advantage programs. Service of length, approximately 30 to 90 days. Staff, you're gonna get an RN, an LPN, PT, which is physical therapist, OT, which is occupational therapist, PTA is a physical therapist assistant, and OT is an, uh, I'm sorry, occupational therapy assistant. They give you scheduled visits, approximately one hour each, three times a week. And to start services, a physician order required to receive services. So this is kind of more the medical end of private duty but those people are not gonna be able to do your cooking, your cleaning, your transportation, et cetera. Um, and we'll get to that. So private home care, you're, those are the ones who are, they're gonna, they kind of work together. So whatever one does, the other one can't and vice versa. So you're gonna have 
homemaker companion, personal care, assist with activities of daily living. This is gonna be private pay. The LTC, LTC stands for long-term care insurance. Service length, indefinite, depends on the person in need of the care. Staff, you're gonna get a certified home health aide or you're gonna get a certified nursing assistant. Visits, fully customized schedule from a simple shower visit to 24 seven. Start services, families call to schedule services whenever you like. So the Medicare is the one who's gonna schedule it for you from the doctor's order and Medicare is gonna pay for it. Private home care, you're gonna deal directly with the company. How to get started. Oh my, my picture's on my screen but not yours. <laughs> schedule a free in-home consultation. Identify a budget for care. Access possible financial assistance which can be your veteran's aid and attendance, long-term care insurance, et cetera. Develop a care plan to fit the budget. Review minimums versus 24-7 care and possible discounts or specials. Recommend additional senior resources to develop a healthy long-term care plan. Identify a start date. Contact me, Amy Conti. I am a senior resource specialist for Chelsea Place Home Care, and you can email me at aconti at chelseaplacecare.com, or you can call 941-676-3411. However, I have my business cards with my personal and business cell, and you can call me anytime, as I can give you any information you need, and it's my pleasure to help you. So oh, we have a couple of minutes. <laughs> so I will be available afterwards, but ask me some questions. Oh, for Chelsea Place currently, for our home care, um, honestly, I can't give you the exact amount today. Um, I So I am not the administrator. I do our outreach. I do consultations. I do all the outreach for Chelsea Place. So as far as our employees go, I know it's under 100 right now. It could be a little lower than 100, but I'm not positive. <laughs> but all our employees are our employees, and they um, work for us. So when we send them into your home, we actually are their employer. So if they, all right, pre-COVID even, somebody doesn't feel good, their car breaks down, um, emergency comes up, we always have a backup. And we are available to go for a shower visit, a well check, available 24 seven. And ours are, have to be a home health aide through us, but some are certified nursing assistants. Okay. Does that answer your question? We're, we're growing. We have our assisted living and our um, daytime center. But we are constantly hiring and looking for great people. Okay, your question. Okay, we can assist. So you know how people have pill boxes set up? Sometimes the families can do it for them, or a pharmacy can. We can even refer a pharmacy to put them in um, the little pill packs with the bubbles, we call them. So with medication, we can't physically administrate it into them. We can refer somebody who can or somebody with a higher license. We can open up the pill bottle, put it on a napkin, and watch them take it. Or we can put it in their hand, raise their hand to their mouth where they can take it. They have to assist in some form. Okay. Yeah, except um, for your Medicare, home health, the physical therapy, occupational, they can do wound care and administration. Um, like if you have a colostomy bag and it needs to be changed, we can empty it, but they have to change it. You're welcome.
No. Yeah. So Medicare, just to clarify again, the question was Medicare. Okay. Say, for instance, God forbid, you broke your hip. You, after the hospital, you go to her rehabilitation. They send you home with home health. So what they're going to do is they're going to send you home with home health to continue the therapy. Everything basically except for hands-on care you got in the rehabilitation center. That's when a private duty company comes in because they will do the other things. You can have both, but you unfortunately have to pay for one. But again, I know you guys came in a few minutes after. No, don't worry about it. But there's veterans benefits, the aid and attendance. Make sure you stop by the veterans benefit office table. They will explain that to you. Um, and then there's also um, long-term care insurance. If you have it, it's a private policy that will pay for it. Or there's, if you are on Medicaid, there are Medicaid programs that will pay for it as well. But there's only certain companies that will accept Medicaid. Yes. Okay. It's okay. So th the veterans benefits, there's some departments that can provide services directly for private duty. The aid and attendance, what that does is that gives you money, and I'll just give you a little quickie on that because they need, actually Ivy Winkler is going to be speaking if you can talk, hear her today. She's great. So you can get aid and attendance to help you with medical bills of any type, whether at home, help you go into assisted living, our daytime center, home care. But you can't use it like to take a trip and go on a cruise. It has to be for anything medically related. And as long as you need help with at least one activity of daily living, you can even it can pay for coming to our daytime center. We do work with the VA, but we're not a provider who sent, like where they can go to home, um, home care, at somebody's home where they just send them over and the VA pays us directly. Yeah, no, they need to call us. But so Charlotte County Veterans Benefit Office is here. Okay, so that Ivy's here. Okay, so if we have somebody who attends the daytime center and they can get aid and attendance, they, they can come to our program. Gotcha. So what they, okay, so you have to have a contract with them. We don't have a contract, but we would love to have a contract with them. So we, what we can do is, so they go to our center, Debbie Spear. She's actually here today. If you grab one of her cards, she can work that out with you, and we can see if we can make that happen. We'll do our best. How's that? And then if it is the aid and attendance, though, we, if somebody's applying for that for assisted living, they just let them know. But what you're talking about is a little bit different. And it's hopefully something we'll get fully in the future. I have one minute left. Last question. Okay, so we do our absolute best to get the same person to come. Does that always happen? Sometimes not, unfortunately, but we do our very best. Now, we also, for people who would like, we can do a meet and greet before, which you would arrange with our home care director. 
And um, it's our goal to do that, but unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't always work. And sometimes it's not such a bad thing because you get comfortable with somebody. What about if they are sick, they can't come? It's always better to have a couple, like maybe two people even in there. So this way, if one doesn't come, the other one can. And I have to stop right now. However, I will be in the consultation area. And please feel free to come over and get my card or meet me over there. I'll be happy to answer any question. And thank you guys. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me.